for them. Just give me one sec, let me switch my mic. Uh, can you guys hear me? Wait, can you guys... Wait, uh... Oh, this isn't, this isn't working, give me a sec. I'm just gonna have to use this mic. Um, let me just put these away. Alright, I was looking at um, if you guys can hear my little brother's crying, just ignore it. Um, <laughs> we're obviously looking at this on the monthly. It kind of looked like um, a distribution schematic, but uh, let me just remove all of these. So this is kind of looking like a distro schematic. Uh, I haven't really got around to making any of the Wyckoff videos I told Chris but I'll be getting to I'll be getting to that soon. Um, so obviously, right now my only bias for this is to sell, unless there's like any significant push to the upside that kind of breaks this general sell uh, sentiment, this short sentiment. Uh, I'll be looking to I'll be looking to keep selling this. And to be honest, any region like you might think that oh this has kind of surpassed its um its ideal point of entry, yeah. But if you look at on from the monthly, we potentially even if we come for this low down here, that's seven hundred pips to go. And if we even come for this one down here, that's two two K pips. But obviously I'm I'll probably be looking for like this will be my uh my main target, these equal loads down here. So if we go back to the 15, right, so if you look at how this played out, we had a mitigation here and a move to the downside. We came back up, we kind of had a false mitigation in a way because when we came back down, we didn't really break this low here to create new market structure. We kind of got into the Asian uh, consolidation period and by London Open, which is right here, we stabbed and purged the Asian low. And then we made a reversal to the upside. So obviously this here was the move here would have enticed sellers and then it would have went up against them. And then this move here would have enticed buyers and then it would have moved down against them. So it's quite funny how that works out. But obviously if you identify you got areas of uh you got open interest up here, so potential liquidity, and if you notice how we purge that liquidity on the New York Open, it all just kind of makes sense. So let me just remove this and this and these and this. Let me delete all of this actually. I mean, the last kind of point maybe should go over is um looking at let me delete this too looking at volume so if you look at volume whilst we were kind of heading into that uh into that range notice how price was increasing yeah but bearish volume was decreasing so obviously that shows price instability it, it kind of shows that this move here isn't going to last long and you don't you don't necessarily want to know when it's not when it's going to end through volume 
but you want to kind of have the confirmation that this is this hit is going to be short lived and if you pair it up with obviously your inefficiency fill and potential liquidity purge and your time frame time confluence confluence yeah the time confluence of like or oh, at 12 when we have our new york um kind of liquidity injection that that's what we're going to see then it will kind of will like go hand in hand and it will make sense uh, can you guys still hear me Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, wicked. Yeah, but don't worry. Alright. Uh, bang, let me just... So for next week, if we go into the higher, this this move here... Oh, let me remove volume. This move recently was a strong push to the downside and we didn't really have any buying pressure. So coming into next week, I kind of want to look for a um, a retracement up into like this kind of general region here and essentially what we got right is this four hour inefficiency here yeah if we go to the three hour um this inefficiency comes up here And we got another one right below here. Now the main difference is, and the reason why I'm gonna go for the higher one is simply because that it's in a more premium market. Like I doubt, I mean I hope not, but I wouldn't want to see this just make a small retracement and carry on the move to the downside. I'd kind of rather would have something like this, kind of like make a corrective wave into that and then retrace to the downside, break structure, hopefully, um, sorry, come back to some sort of premium and then go down. But that's kind of like what I'd prefer to see. And yeah, out of these two inefficiencies, I'll definitely pick the, the higher one, more, this more premium market. It lines up with more confluences as well. So I'm gonna go into that now. So if you go down to the two hour, Obviously, this inefficiency here kind of breaks up, but here it's still pretty strong. And we've got the 50% there. If we go to the one hour, we've got this kind of like nice general region. So we've got nice time frame confluence here. It's in pretty deep uh, premium market. Uh, if we just slap our fib onto this. It literally lines up with the fifty percent of the of the range perfectly. So that's the kind of setup I'd like to see. To be honest, um, if, we, if, we, if we obviously pair this up with time as well, uh, like to see this happen. I mean, if this happens on Monday, uh, I mean I don't really like trading trading on Mondays simply because like just personal preference of like my experience Mondays have generally not been good but um if this happens on Monday I'll be reluctant to take it I'd probably want to see some sort of like move lower make this even more uh premium and then probably come and stab this on Tuesday Tuesday morning that'd be nice but Again, it's all about how we kind of get to that region. If we just move up quite sharply, then I'd kind of be reluctant. You never know what what's going to happen. Unless, obviously, we get a nice reaction and um, everything kind of lines up perfectly, then I guess I'll look to take it. But it's all, it will have to be um, decided upon appropriately. Uh, something else I was, you wanted to show you guys was... US 30 now I don't know if any of you trade US 30 but essentially what I wanted to show was how these um, morning London and New York times kind of work across the board so let's just look um, 
this is kind of a more of a back testing just to show you um if you look here so we had our uh, what was this this is kind of going to like um new york clothes but then the asian lure was here and as we started the london session if you see we started to make a move for that liquidity and we purged it right when New York started and if you look closely as New York starts we start to make a reversal of this initial move so obviously this probably would have enticed sellers and then the true move would have happened during the New York so we obviously came up moved up higher and uh, let me zoom in so you can see that a bit better So bang, we came up, we kind of had a, a break of scalp structure here and then we had an inefficiency here that, that I kind of wanted it to fill before we moved on. So if we just place our entry here, our stop loss below the candle and obviously this up wherever, this was quite... Um, this is quite nice the way it um the way it kind of just purged these two equal lows here you see notice how it formed the equal lows just to take them out and then move on and continue higher so the those people who are being taught to trade double bottoms they're just figuring thinking why is this not working when re really this is like in a way the real rules of the game and then uh, you could have had your take profit even at this purge up here and that would have got you that would have got you a nice 15% trade and then obviously this kind of works across the board you can go and back test this just look at look at what moves occur at 8 a.m. and at 12 and you kind of generally see across the board that there's some sort of manipulation that happens uh, let me see if yeah, you had one here as well. What is with these adverts? Alright, let's zoom in here. So this was uh, 8 a.m. here. We kind of had a, a slow movement, then we kind of moved to the downside. Probably we purged this low here, nothing too significant. And then by 12, we kind of did the same thing. We moved to the downside and made a small retracement mitigate out of this inefficiency here could have had a nice entry if we knew that post 12 would kind of carry on the direction for the day and that's literally what we saw here I mean if you took it off that small inefficiency you would have bagged a nice however many pips this is 704 I think that's equivalent to 70 normal pips I don't, I don't really know how to work that out um, GBP USD. Let's take a look at this last pair. So Yep, I'm I'm all longs for this. Uh kind of a tough one. Obviously this looks all pretty filled in. We kinda came up down here filled in. I mean mitigated some sort of candle. Uh, movement away, strong break of structure of even this intraday structure here. So, to be fair, a retracement into this level here would be nice. So let's see if we got some form of time frame confluence here. Yeah, it still stands on a 45, 40, 30. All right, 30. We kind of broke that up. Let's see if we got on the 25. Alright, 20, yep, 15, nope, 10, hmm, nothing in general but that, I feel like on the 20 minute we kind of got a nice, a nice inefficiency here, 
I'd look I'd look at how price would react if we if we do come down to this region. Obviously we're kind of looking like we're slowing down in terms of momentum. We've got some indecision going on. So if we kind of have like um if we've got momentum on our side and we have like a slow then a, a dive into this, you know, break of structure, return to premium and then buy this. Because um if if um if we're selling Euro GBP then most GBP XXX pairs will most likely go up. Just kind of like general rule of thumb how it works. But uh, yeah, I don't really have much else to show. Um, I mean, I'm kind of waiting for the market to give me some more information to work with. We're kind of at, um, even with a uh, Euro GBP, we're kind of at like the bottom of what's supposed to be um, a leg. And here we kind of have like the top of a supposed leg. So I kind of want to see the retracement into the week, see how fast we uh, we make that retracement and uh, assess it accordingly and hopefully take some take some nice trades next week. Uh, does anyone want me to look at anything? Does anyone want me to look at anything? We've got five. Oh. Man like Sham in the call. Is anyone uh, trading the, the FTSE? Nah, I've, I don't think I've even looked at it. Uh, is, is this it? Nah. I think it's this. Yeah, that's one. I mean, in general, you kind of see the these concepts apply to like um so obviously we had we had a lacuna here that we kind of came and filled or mitigate out of and that's funny because this is this is a footsie so it just goes to show how the concepts don't just they're not just um they don't just exist because you know someone decided to make them or whatever but there's actually logic behind it because if if someone sold here and then the market went up against them they'll probably hold those orders and come back to break even and then obviously market went up to do its thing uh, let me just look at this on the hourly you can probably find some nice entries on this you know We've got a nice sc here if that was an indecision candle but Probably a nice fifty percent tap there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a kind of a choppy one, but when it moves, it moves. All right, look at that. That'd be nice. Came down, purged it slow. Yeah, I mean, in general, like the the things that you're taught here, you can even apply to like crypto. So if you look at XRP, for example. Uh, let me just I think we had a nice uh, inefficiency tap I think it was around here nah where was it oh we actually starting to move upwards um, I don't know which broker it was on but there was an inefficiency around here and now you had a perfect tap um see if we see anything this inefficiency here kind of filled a bit of it but um you don't really have that many large uh in like financial type players in the crypto space yet so i don't think we'll really see those type of moves right now but in general it does um it does respect the concepts like they apply to pretty much every chart you can find. I think someone showed me the, I think it was an orange juice um, market in Spain and it was on a chart and he, he saw an inefficiency get filled, which is pretty funny. I mean, it's orange juice. But yeah, besides that, this is my prime. Like this is 
this is beautiful. This is, if I take this, I'll probably hold this for the next month. Because uh, Euro GBP is going to die in my opinion. We, we've been on this downtrend since what? The beginning of last month. But I, I kind of want to see like um, a proper move. Uh, something like this. That kind of size move. I think that's what we're... Once we break out of this, uh, this distribution schematic. So once we break out of this kind of general area here. That's when I want to see this move. So that's why I'm saying like we're still all the way up here. Any entry we get realistically, because we're so focused on like the hourly, we fail to see like in the general bigger picture, we're actually still very early to the party. I know someone that got in up here, but yeah, in general, we're still quite early. Because even from here to here, that's 700 pips. Wherever you sell it in this whole range, you can make nice percentage returns. Like, you can sell it. Right now, yeah, knowing it's going to go down, but without the precision, your risk of rewards is going to be shambolic, so there's no point. It's going to be patient and wait for the market to give me a good entry on that, and then, um, yeah, I'll see how that goes. But besides that, can you guys still hear me? I keep saying your, your mic's been changed. Uh, yeah, you can hear me, yeah? Besides that, you guys are going to get more content in the following week. So what you're going to get is one... Um, uh, da -da -da wait, let me stop recording. There's no point recording from now.